Good morning. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. It is good that we are here to worship God together, and I wish each of you a very happy Mother's Day as we celebrate Christian Family Sunday together. I do have wonderful news to celebrate with you. Last week, I was able to tell you that Freedom's application as a refugee to Canada has been approved. So this is wonderful, but then in this past week, we heard that the other refugees that we are sponsoring, their application is now being considered. It's so they, each of all of them have taken one step for, further toward coming to Canada. This is wonderful news, so please keep Freedom and Daniel Teheras and what well, we'll it in your prayers. This is such uh, good news. And I also wanted to highlight in the bulletin, today is the start of the baby bottle campaign for women care. It will run from Mother's Day to Father's Day. And so it's uh, completely online because of COVID. So you'll find the information in the bulletin. Let's prepare ourselves with, for worship with silent prayer. Let's pray. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Please join me in the call to worship. Along with all those in heaven, let us cry out together. Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. Along with the redeemed, let us praise God with joyful hearts. For this reason, we come before the throne of God and worship the Lord day and night. Called together by the Holy Spirit, let us rejoice and sing. We will hunger and thirst no more. The Lamb will guide us to springs of the water of life. Let us worship God. Our opening hymn is For the Beauty of the Earth. Let's praise God together. Thank you. 
Let's pray. God of the ages, God of today, you are compassion, our cup overflows. You are hope, you lead us into green pastures. You are truth, you lead us beside quiet streams. You are life, you restore our souls. Morning, noon, and night, O oh God, you are the source of our, of our joy. We gather to worship you as one family of your people, honoring you as our creator, trusting you as our savior, celebrating you as the spirit who gives us life. Amen. Let us continue to pray together in unison. Merciful God, we confess we stray from your ways like lost sheep. We follow the desires of our own hearts, ignoring the needs of others. We judge others more, more generously than others. We fail to offer others the forgiveness we seek from you. We nurse grudges and cling to our own opinions. Forgive the ways we betray your love and return us to your paths of truth and mercy. For we pray in the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The letter to the Ephesians declares that Christ dwells in our hearts through faith, for we are being rooted and grounded in his love. The forgiveness he offers is a gift of this love. Receive God's forgiveness with grateful hearts and be at peace with God and with each other and within yourselves. Amen. Our hymn is Psalm 62. Please stand and let's sing together. <laughs>
Please be seated. And would the children please come forward? Come on up <laughs> and have a seat in the front pew. Good morning. Now, we've been talking about Easter people, so we, this is our third one. We had Thomas, who's the one who asked questions, and then we had Peter, who saw Jesus when he had a, a fish fry at the beach, and Jesus forgave him. And today, we're talking about a woman named Tabitha. Now, Tabitha was a woman in the Bible who showed her love for God. She served as an Easter people because she sewed clothes for people. And she sewed clothes particularly for the poor, and, and the Bible tells us that she took care of many people who were widows. But, you know, I expect she also chose clothes, sold clothes for children because, you know, children grow fast and they need clothes all the time. So that is how Tabitha showed her love for God. She sold people because she was good at sewing. Now, most of us don't have clothes that were specially sewn for us, right? It's not, not quite as common today. But what we do have is clothes that are special to us because someone gave them to us. So I brought to show you my favorite shirt. If you guys are on Zoom, you've seen me wear this shirt lots and lots of time. It's beginning to look a little old. Can you see what's on it? Who's on it? Mickey Mouse. Yeah, Mickey's on this shirt. It says Mickey right across it, and then there's Mickey who's springing all over this shirt. I love this shirt because it's a nice, cheerful color, and it's very comfortable. But the main reason I love it is because it was given to me by my friend, and my friend loves Disney. She just loves everything Disney, and so whenever I wear this shirt, I remember my friend, and I'm grateful for her. Now, in the story, there's a sad part, because Tabitha dies, and all the people in the church came to church wearing the clothes that Tabitha had shown for them. It was kind of a special moment. They wore the clothes that Tabitha had sewn for them. And I'm wondering, now we, most of us are not sewers. We just, that's, you know, some people sew, but not everybody. But everybody is to show their love for others by caring for them. So I'm a little curious, when we think about what would people show to remember how we love them, how we cared for them, what would they bring? Back in the story, in the Bible, they brought the clothes. What would people bring to show the world how we have shown them God's care and love? 
So let's repeat, re pray together. It's a repeat after me prayer. Let's pray. Dear God, help us to care and love everyone. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, time to go downstairs to Sunday school. It was great to see you this morning. The reading today is from Acts 9, 36 to 43. In Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha. In Greek, her name was Dorcas. She was always doing good and helping the poor. About that time, she came, became sick and died, and her body was washed and placed in an upstairs room. Lydda was near Joppa, so when the disciples heard that Peter was in Lydda, they sent two men to him and urged him, Please come at once. Peter went with them, and when he arrived, he was taken upstairs to the room. All the widows stood around him, crying and showing him the robes and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was still with them. Peter sent them all out of the room. Then he got down on his knees and prayed. Turning toward the dead woman, he said, Tabitha, get up. She opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He took her by the hand and helped her to her feet. Then he called for the believers, especially the widows, and presented her to them alive. This became known all over Joppa, and many people believed in the Lord. Peter stayed in Joppa for some time with a tanner named Simon. This is the word of the Lord. What I'm about to say, I do so in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. It's just a nursery rhyme, but it has a remarkable influence. Humpty Dumpty is broken. And putting him back together is an impossible task. It can't be done. That's just the way things are. Not so, says the book of Acts. Not so, little church. The power of God that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is among you, is at work among you. Acts tells us that those who were in the way were empowered to turn the world upside down. The book of Acts, part two of the Gospel of Luke, is filled with stories of conversions and healings and life after death. Today, we read the story of the raising of Tabitha. Now, we're not usually given many details about the people who experience a miracle. The story in Acts 9 is an exception to this general principle. We know a lot about Tabitha. For starters, she, we are told both her Aramaic and her Greek name, and both names are used in the text. She straddles the Jewish Christian world and the Greek world, seemingly comfortable in both, able to accept differences and build bridges between cultures. We know she was rich because only the wealthy could afford a second story in their house. She is the first and only disciple, only person to be identified as a disciple in the Bible using the feminine form of the word. Apparently, the little church in Joppa was led by a woman. Now, that's interesting because centuries later, the church struggled with uh, whether or not women could be allowed to be the spiritual leaders of a congregation. Careful reading of Acts 9 and other texts indicates that the early church did not share this hesitation. In noting this, we can celebrate the work of the Holy Spirit, who opened our eyes and our ears to a new understanding of the scriptures. The church may have missed it because it skimmed over this text, but the Spirit of God has drawn it to our attention. 
Tabitha was a disciple of Jesus Christ, and she faithfully led her church's ministry to the poor and the vulnerable. In this case, in Joppa, it was a ministry with widows. And that's how Tabitha is described. She was always doing good and helping the poor. Following Jesus, her risen Lord and Savior, Tabitha offered concrete and practical help to the widows of Joppa. Tabitha was kind and generous. She was a talented seamstress, and she looked out for the needs of others. About that time, she became sick and died, and her body was washed and placed in an upstairs room. Humpty Dumpty has fallen from the wall and is beyond repair. Now, Tabitha's death should have been the end of the story. She was a godly leader of that little congregation and would be terribly missed. This is a story of grief and sorrow, but the story does not end with her death. The church had heard that Peter was only 14 miles away, and so they sent two men to Lydda, asking him to come at once. Now, we're not told about their expectations for Peter. Were they longing for words of comfort in the face of their great loss? They had probably heard of his healing of the paralytic Aeneas in Lydda, and so perhaps they were longing for their own miracle. At any rate, they sent for Peter, and he came. Peter listens to their sorrow and then sends everyone out of the room. He prays and tells Tabitha to get up, And she does. To read this story is to remember other stories. Even as Jesus raised Jairus' daughter from the dead, even as Jesus raised the widow of Nain's son from the dead, so Peter has brought Tabitha back to life. The power of God that raised the Lord Jesus from the dead is working among us. Don't be afraid, little church. I am here. Now, we are told that the the news spread throughout Joppa and that many people believed in the Lord. The raising of Tabitha is a word of hope and encouragement for God's people. And yet, there were many Christians who died and were not raised. Tabitha herself is more resuscitated than resurrected. Unlike Jesus, she will die eventually, and Peter will not raise her a second time. Peter himself will die, and we believe he was crucified, as was Jesus. So these these details subtly shift our attention elsewhere, away from Peter and toward that little community of faith. For God healed Tabitha not only through Peter, but through that church in Joppa. They are a healing community. Every church that is faithful to the gospel is a healing community. So, what are the marks of a healing community? When Tabitha died, the first thing the church did was care for her body. They did not turn away from the realities of death. They offered her body care and respect, honoring both Tabitha and the God who created her. We are created in the image of God. Our bodies matter. And having washed and laid Tabitha on the bed in the upper room, they sent for help. They drew on spiritual resources They drew together, coming together to share their sorrow. They are not dispersed, isolated, or alone. They are standing together. And when when Peter comes, they show him the clothes that Tabitha had made. Some scholars believe that the form of the verb showing indicates that they are wearing the clothes that Tabitha had sewn. It's almost a fashion show for love of Tabitha. She is not forgotten. They are celebrating her life and all that she meant to them, and they cry, for they loved Tabitha, and they feel her loss sharply. 
This is a picture of, a, of the church where the members all know each other well, bound together in, in loving and caring relationships. Peter sends them outside. They don't go far because when he calls them, they, they come right back in. I expect they are standing outside that door praying. These, these are the marks of a healing community. You are a resurrection community of healing. You have spoken to me of these things. You, you came to this church somewhat bruised and guarded. You were worn out, more accurately, worn down. You came here, and you were surprised by love and the healing that God gives through God's people. Every congregation that is true to the gospel will be a place of healing, of tenderness, of, of compassion, of, of wholeness and shalom. And so when there is an unwelcome diagnosis in our congregation, when one of us is walking through the valley of the shadow of death, we do not disperse. We stand together, offering prayers and ready to heat soups. To speak of being a healing congregation does not disparage the work of modern medicine. No, we bless God for science, for lives offered in study and discipline and research. Faith and science complement each other. Holistic healing is an intersection of a prayer, a hopeful attitude, and the resources of medicine. Church at Joppa was a healing partner in overcoming illness and brokenness, and so are we. The graphic on the, the PowerPoint this morning is a picture of a healing community joined together through the love of God. This is what a resurrection community looks like, laughter and love and tears shared, burdens shouldered together, Prayers offered, knowing that confidences will be kept and that God will answer. This is who we are. This is what we lean into. This is what we offer the world. Thanks be to God. Our hymn is How Clear Is Our Vocation. Let's stand and sing to God.
Please be seated. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus Christ, you came to us bearing God's love to walk with us as our good shepherd, showing us how to love each other. You pray with us and for us day by day. Today we turn to you with our hopes and concerns in these uncertain times. Draw near to us and to all those for whom we pray so that your love will be known in our world this day. Lord Jesus, on this Christian Family Sunday, we pray for the families to which we belong. We thank you for parents, grandparents, and great-grandparents, for the generations who started our families and all they gave to us. Today, we thank you for all those who mothered us, grateful for their care and guidance. We pray for mothers throughout the world, thinking especially of mothers in Ukraine and other places of conflict, worried for their children and the future. Strengthen every caregiver's hope and courage by the power of your spirit and create peace in the world so children can grow up in safety. Lord Jesus, we pray for families in our community and around the world in this uncertain times. We remember families in need, those struggling with economic upheaval and the high cost of living, those who know sorrow because someone has died or gone away, those who live in pain or fear or face some kind of discrimination. Surround these families with your love and courage. Bring them support from their neighbors and guide each child and young person into the future. Lord Jesus, we pray for the family of nations in this time of threat and conflict. Change the hearts of leaders bent on destruction or conquest. Give wisdom and courage to those who seek justice through negotiation and protect all those who offer themselves in aid and advocacy work. Bring peace with justice to this troubled world. Lord Jesus, we pray for each other and for our church family. We give you thanks for the friendship and fellowship we share and the unique gifts each one brings to our life together. Rekindle our energy for ministry and mission and show us our path into the future. Make us a beacon of hope in your name. Lord Jesus, you are our good shepherd, guiding us through dark valleys and green pastures. We thank you for your presence with us in all times and circumstances. This we pray in your name, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Our closing hymn is Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us. Let's stand and sing to God. Yeah.
resurrection community of healing. Go out into the world and share this gift. And the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit rest upon you this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>